Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of CameraLabs.com, and I'm here with three of the biggest digital SLRs available right now. The Canon EOS 400D, also known as the Rebel XTI in North America, the Nikon D80, and the Sony Alpha A100. We've compared the quality and features of these three 10 megapixel digital SLRs in a group test at CameraLabs.com, and in this video, I'd like to show you some of the highlights. I'll start with build quality and design. Canon 400D is by far the smallest and lightest of the three cameras tested here and this could be really important to you if you're into hiking or travelling light. Maybe you're also upgrading to your first digital SLR from a point and shoot and while something like this is clearly much bigger than any point and shoot, in digital SLR terms it's about as small and light as you can get. The Nikon D80 is the biggest and heaviest of the three cameras, but it also has the best build quality of all three. You only have to pick this camera up to realise you're dealing with a pretty serious piece of kit. It feels incredibly solid, the grip's really comfortable, all the buttons are in exactly the right places. Ergonomically, it's a very well thought out design. The Sony Alpha A100 comes between the Canon and Nikon in terms of size, weight and build quality, but this camera has got one feature that the other two are missing. It actually has built-in anti-shake, which works with any lens you attach, even the budget kit lens that comes with it. Now in contrast, if you want anti-shake on the Canon and Nikon, you'll need to spend extra on a lens with optical stabilisation, and that will really put the price up of your standard package. Like many entry-level digital SLRs, the Canon 400D uses its main colour screen on the back, not just for menus and playback, but also to display all shooting information. You can see it here, showing the shutter speed, aperture, focus point selection, a really great deal of information there. Now, there's pros and cons to this approach. First of all, as you can see, there's a massive amount of information and the high resolution screen allows the fonts to look really nice. On the downside, if you like taking pictures under very bright sunlight, you might begin to find this screen slightly hard to read. So we'd always recommend before buying this camera that you go to a shop, check it out for yourself outside first. The Nikon D80 also has a 2.5 inch colour screen on the back, but unlike the Canon and Sony models, there's also a secondary screen here. Now this screen is used for all your exposure information, like shutter speed, aperture, number of shots you got left, metering mode, all of that sort of thing. This could be really important to you if you do shoot under very bright conditions, because unlike the colour screens on the back of the Canon and Sony, this screen is visible under very, very bright conditions. Of course, in turn, it can't show as much information as the Canon and Sony do on their main screens, so it's a case of swings and roundabouts, really. The Sony A100, like the Canon 400D, uses its main colour screen on the back to show all shooting information. Here's what you can see. Aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and again, a wealth of extra information. However, the Sony's got one trick that the Canon hasn't got. If you're taking a picture in portrait aspect, watch what happens. The text turns with you. And it works in the other direction as well. We think that's a pretty neat feature. Of course, the pros and cons of using a big colour screen on the back are the same as the Canon. You can pack in a massive amount of information, and the Sony even lets you reformat it with bigger fonts for greater readability. But again, it might not be as visible under very, very bright light, so it's definitely worth checking if that's something that you're concerned about. Now we're going to take a closer look at some of the menus, and we'll start with the Canon 400D. Here's the main screen you see when using the 400D. As we explained earlier, there's a great deal of exposure information here, from shutter speed to aperture, ISO setting, and even the autofocus point selection. Four buttons to the right of the main screen let you vary popular options. For example, the ISO sensitivity, the white balance setting, the autofocus system, and the metering mode. Pressing the menu button takes you into five main menu pages, where you can vary things like the quality, and also set the dust delete data. This is unique to the 400D and allows it to record a dust reference frame that can then be tagged on to subsequent images for removal of dust marks automatically using software later. You can see a full explanation of that in our Canon 400D review. It's also worth taking a quick look at the playback. Here's a picture that we took earlier on and by pressing the display button you can show some basic exposure information or press it a second time and you get more detailed information including a red, green and blue histogram in the top right corner. 
Next we'll take a closer look at some of the Nikon D80's menus. Now unlike the Canon and Sony products, the Nikon D80 uses its main colour screen only for menu navigation and image playback. Here we are in the main shooting menu and it's pretty clear that Nikon's put quite a lot of effort into the design of these menus. It's of course an entirely personal thing but we reckon they're some of the best looking menus around at the moment. Interestingly the D80 has a menu entirely dedicated to retouching images. Here it is and what it does is allow you to actually adjust some of the pictures that you've already taken and create a brand new JPEG so that the original picture remains untouched. Here's the delighting option so let's choose a picture to adjust. There's three options here, normal, moderate and enhanced and you can see on the image on the right that the enhanced option has made the background ever so slightly brighter. It's like playing around with the levels in Photoshop. One of the other things you can do is actually crop your pictures in camera with the trim function. Again, choose another picture and then by using the zoom buttons on the back of the D80 you can zoom in on a portion of the image. You can see an overview of this in the bottom right corner and then choose to crop that if you like. You can see the remaining number of pixels in the top left corner. Another thing that's quite interesting about the D80 is its slideshow mode. If we go and have a quick look at this you can see that there are actually additional options. If we go to the change settings page here you can actually have background music playing with your slideshows. Now there's no loudspeaker built into the D80 so this will only be heard if you plug it into your TV but we've got an example of it for you here. You can actually choose five different tunes and we think we're going to go for a bit of Simon and Garfunkel. Here's the Sony A100's main screen and like the Canon it exploits high resolution to show a vast amount of shooting information. However unlike the Canon the Sony can reformat this data. We've already seen it rotating when you put the camera on the side but by pressing a button to the side of the screen you can also make the fonts that bit bigger and more readable. There's also a dial on top of the Sony A100 that gives quick access to common features like the ISO, the white balance and the Sony's D-Range optimizer mode. This adjusts the levels in camera in order to bring out total detail in dark shadows or bright highlights. You can see how this works better in our review of the Sony A100 at CameraLabs.com. And just finally, a look at playback. Like the Canon and Nikon models, you can display a histogram of pictures that you've taken, but unlike those two cameras, the histogram as seen here in the bottom left corner is brightness only. Unfortunately, there's no RGB histogram option on the Sony A100. So there's an overview of some of the highlights of these three 10 megapixel digital SLRs. To find out more about all three and which one is going to work out best for you, please check out our group test at www.cameralabs.com.